Hey everyone, welcome back, and in this episode, let's go over what the folder structure is, how .NET Core works, etc. So, uh, the folders that you should ignore are these bin, obj, and properties folder. Bin and obj are essentially your build folder, so when you uh, build your project, um, it will create the .dll file, which is uh, something like an executable, but uh, it's called the dynamically linked library. When we run our application, bin and obj folders get filled up with all sorts of files that allow us to run our program like so. So these are the folders that you should ignore. You don't really need to know what inside of them. And uh, the only thing that they get essentially used for is deleting when something goes wrong. So if you're ever in trouble, go ahead, delete obj and bin folders and rerun your application. Okay, so properties folder is just some information about your uh, application and uh, where it should run. Uh, you don't really need to worry about this stuff. So properties, obj and bin, you don't need to go in them. Uh, next thing is appsettings.json. And uh, as you, ca you can probably guess, these this is where you would uh, store your development environment uh, variables and settings. So here, uh, currently in this upsettings.json file, you can see some uh, login configuration. Okay, so following uh, forward, .net, .cs proj file, this is our package information. So this would be the equivalent of a project.json file for uh, our JavaScript environment. So, so here you can see the packages that get imported, import, imported in order for our application to run. Next thing is the program.cs file. This is the entry point for the application and this is the first thing that gets executed and builds our application and start, starts it up essentially. Uh, next thing is the startup.cs file. This is, let's delete these comments that they're useless. Uh, this is where our application gets configured and uh, let's actually close this up so we get the full view and let me zoom in once okay so let's break this down one, one by one so using statements this is same as your javascript import statements we import some namespace or file that contains a bunch of uh, classes and functionality so so what we can do is we can go into application dot builder we can press f12 we can see what namespace it's coming from and this is essentially an interface we can see what we can access within here okay so these are the libraries that we essentially import and that we are using okay namespace is how we define this namespace so where are these files where is this functionality where are these classes located right so at the moment this will be in our .NET api namespace next thing we define a class uh, a startup again this is convention and uh, generally you will always have a startup class in a .NET core app all right so configure ser services and configure now, the best way to understand this is by the keywords add.mvc. So if we go to services dot, it's always going to start with add. So we're, when we're adding something to our application, to our services, this is what we're going to do. Uh, and here we call use. All right. So these are two very distinct names for methods. And... Uh, y is one following the add pattern and the other one is following the use pattern so the add keyword actually means that we're going to be adding something to our dependency inje injection container so the dotnet core app is uh, built on top of a very powerful dependency injection container and that stores all of our dependencies that we're going to use across of our across our application uh, if you are aware, if you know what dependency injection is, you will have no problem understanding. But if you're new, don't worry about it. As we're using the app, it's going to get more apparent of what that is. And uh, the use is basically just configures our application. So we are not importing any functionality. 
we're rather telling our application how it should function okay so this is essentially it uh, add mvc and uh, use mvc so what is mvc mvc stands for model view controller and it's a design pattern we don't have the view part but we have the model and controller part so mvc where we specify use mvc this is what tells our application to look for a controllers folder if we want to use some other name we can but we have to write some additional code to override that i'm not going to go I'm gonna not gonna be doing this since we're only want to be using the basics. Uh, so it specifies to look for this controllers folder, and that's how it configures the routing to look for this controllers folder. And again, it specifies this convention to follow: look for a controller, look for a file with a that ends with a controller in the controllers folder, and that's how it finds its functionality and uh, makes the whole thing work. All right, and this is how we get to this profile controller, and um, this is how it finds this action, and that's how it is able to output stuff, right? So let's see what other stuff can we do. So since this is going to be an API, we are going to add an attribute, API controller, and we are going to specify a route. And in here, we want to say square brackets and say controller, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to look for this uh, controller name profile. So our routes will equate to slash profile slash, right? Same as before, but uh, adding this API controller changes, changes things a little bit. Uh, so let's specify here HTTP get. So we're going to be using the get method to reach this action. And because of the API controller, we no longer need to specify the action method to get here. So let me go here and uh, instead of get profile name, let me remove this and go to just the profile. And you will see that it works. But if we actually try to go to get profile name now, oh, it will give you a 404, right? So the routing convention changes when we add this API controller attribute. And if we don't specify a route here, we're, we're going to start to get errors. So I'm not going to get into the uh, what the error is, but essentially this is how our routing will look like now. So slash profile, we want to be able to get a profiles. So following a REST API convention. Let's do something like get profiles. So for now we will return null public string. I'm gonna put strings everywhere for now and uh, I'm not actually, we're actually gonna create an object for profile and return that later. So get profile. And then here I'm going to pass in an ID and return null again. And again, I'm, I want to give this an HTTP get attribute. Cool. But then you can also access uh, something like create profile. And in here we'll again specify string. We'll replace that with a profile class later on. And here, because we're creating, we want to do HTTP post return null and let's actually copy this two more times since you might already anticipate what's happened and what's going to happen http put put usually stands for update and http delete stands for delete okay so let's actually go ahead and create a profile class and return it from profile into id we're not going to specify the id but um, for now i'm going to actually do it below here i'm going to create a public class and i am going to call it profile right so what does a profile have so if you type in prop and tab this will give you this is essentially um, a code snippet for a pro property of a class all right so a profile should have, for now, let's say that it's a string and a first name. Uh, let's say
last name. I'm gonna say int age. Okay, so we created a profile. Let's go ahead, grab the class name, and make our get profile return a profile. And here we can specify new profile. So, and let's say first name equals Anton, last name equals Boop, and age equals 22. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh this. And you will see that we should get multiple actions matched. And that is because when we say HTTP get, it doesn't look at this uh, action name anymore or uh, the. So these functions are different. These methods are different, but this. Uh, this route is identical. So what we need to do is we need to open brackets here and we need to specify in curly brackets that we're gonna be passing an ID here, all right? So let's refresh. Okay, and let's actually, to prevent errors, I'll actually return an empty string instead of a null. Okay. So, Um, again, starting from the top, let's go to profile. So we get nothing. So if we say something like getting all profiles, save that, refresh. Cool. If we try to go to profile slash one, so we're passing in this one ID, so it's going to get passed into here and into here. Let's. Uh, Go in and here we go. So we, at the moment we're returning a, st a static object. So let's go ahead and say something like uh, prop int id. Okay. And in here id will say that it equals to the id that we're passing. Okay. And there we go. So you may notice a few things that it's actually returning JSON straight away. So this will be very easy for us to use in our view application and just to assign that to an object straight away. So this will be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, remember, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And as always, see you in the next episode.